Thanks so much. Thank you so much, everybody. It is such a blessing to be here. I feel like I should be singing with the choir right now. I don't think you want to hear that, though. But why don't you be seated? And it's an honor and a joy to be here uh, back again um, and with this wonderful church and wonderful pastor and pastors um, from Pastor Gary and the rest. I know you guys have been praying, but let's also just pray a blessing on get Pastor Gary. Okay. Father, we just ask your great blessing, anointing, Father, healing, Father, restoration, Lord, strength, Father, power, Father, be upon your servant, Father. Lord, your anointing be upon him in every way, Lord. Your shalom in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, Adonai Rofecha, the Lord, our healer. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I have a lot to share with you. Um, what I'm going to do, they asked if I, could, if I could give you the blessing tonight. So I'm going to give you the blessing, the blessing of God in, he, in the language he gave it. At the end, they also asked, could I sound the shofar for release and freedom? So I think I'll do that. So <clears throat> a number of things. Now, um, uh, when I was doing the book, signing with you there, we, there wasn't enough time for me to keep on signing. So if you didn't get it signed, I'll stay as long as possible. Uh, so after the service, no matter what I, how much I share, I can only give you a taste. There's so much more. And for that reason, uh, I'm going to go over there uh, where they have the books. Uh, they will have the Return of the Gods there. Um, and the other prophetic books, each has a mystery of God there. As soon as the service ends, I'll, I'll do everything I can. I'll meet you there um, afterwards. Now, um, you've always been so hungry for the word. You were scooping up uh, the books and that. So I'm praying that not only do you get it for yourself, but get it for people in your life uh, to bless them, and to uh, give a gift to them. So before we go full blast, let me do what I did this morning, give you a quick idea of what they have for you if you weren't here this morning. To, for you and for the people in your life. Number one is the harbinger. That's the ancient mystery, holds the secret of America's future. It has not stopped coming true, and millions have read it, but millions have not. And so if there are people in your life who need to, get it for them. Second is the book of mysteries. That'll open up hundreds of the mysteries, amazing mysteries of God, not only to be blown away, but to change your life, and not just for you, but this is a, a people are giving, giving this as gifts to unsaved people. Everyone thanks them for it, and people are getting saved. So the book of mysteries. The third is the paradigm that opens up the biblical mystery, so exact, so, so um, specific that it actually gives dates um, and and the people of our times, the events of our times. It actually, after it came out, it's been coming true as well. What happened on January 6th uh, was also in the template of the, of the paradigm. The fourth is the oracle. That is the book on end time prophecy, the mysteries of Israel, Jerusalem, the last days, gives the timetable of the last days. The fifth is the harbinger too. That's the book that I held back for eight years to write because it's the sequel to The Harbinger, and I got a strong sense just before everything happened, 2020, that the shakings were coming on, and, and from the Lord that I had to write it because it was gonna be the continuation of The Harbinger that God's people would know. So that The Harbinger 2 is up to what's happening now, um, and the movie that came out is based on it, but most of that's in the book could not go in the movie. And the last is the newest book. It is the most explosive you'll see tonight. Uh, and that is the return of the gods. And you'll get a taste of it, as you did this morning, um, but no matter what I do, there's so much more. So my calling is to get the word out and to encourage you to get it for yourself and others. So, uh, so this is what they're gonna do. Um, and most of the books are hardcover and they now list around almost $30. If you get one book, though it'll be $15. If you get two, it'll keep going down and down and down until it'll be $10, which again is a happy meal. Basically a little bit more than a happy meal. So that is, I just take advantage of it. It's gonna be the lowest prices on earth. Take advantage on it to encourage you to give it to, as gifts to people as well as for yourself. Okay, and the last resource Source is so unique, it's not available in any bookstore, not available on Amazon, online, and that is, that is the Return of the Gods on Censor. That is the eight DVD album where I'm opening up the mystery, not only what's in the book, but actually what's not in the book because it's uncensored, things I could not even put in there. And you're actually gonna not just hear it, you're gonna see the mysteries unfold, the principalities, you're gonna see the things happen, and including recorded video of prophetic manifestation in New York City and much more. So it's unlike anything else, it's only here pretty much, it's exclusive. So what they will do with that is it, it'll, it's reduced, it'll come out to about $5 a DVD uh, for as long as it lasts. Now lastly, if you wanna, I'm always asked about updates, prophetic updates, so to 
get to get that, to receive free gifts, CDs, prophetic updates, mysteries, they'll have sheets out there. The book table, just put down your contacts, you'll get that free from the ministry. Um, the ministry is Hope of the World, and if you just remember that, Hope of the World or hopeoftheworld.org, you go on there, you can do it there too. Um, and also, lastly, if you're ever in New York or New Jersey, uh, we want you to be your guest. We're family, and it was great to have Pastor Gary and, and the team up there before, so you're welcome at the Jerusalem Center, which is uh, I lead in Wayne, New Jersey. And that's about it. Let's get ready. Father, we just praise you. Thank you, Lord. I ask, Father, as I did, in the, in, Lord, this morning, in my weakness, be strong in your power. And speak, Father, and touch. Have your way, Lord. And Father, I ask you anoint not only the giving of the word, but the receiving and hearing of the word. In the name above every name, the name of Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah. And all his people say, amen. Amen. All right, if you came here for a politically correct message, you definitely came to the wrong place tonight. This is gonna be, I've gotta get, tell you right, this is gonna be, because you know, we are not to be politically correct, we're to be eternally correct. And so this is definitely gonna be explosive, but we, it has to be, and we're gonna deal with, as we did this morning, we're gonna deal with what we are dealing with and what God says about it and the mystery behind it. Now, I didn't plan to share this, but there is a mystery to this day. It says in John 7 that on the last and greatest day of the feast, it says, Messiah, Jesus, stood up and cried out, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And for out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. And he was speaking of the Spirit. On the last and seventh day of the feast, they would pour out water on the Temple Mount and they would, they would pray for the rain and the outpouring of God. And they would recite a scripture as they poured out the water and they would say, and it's Isaiah 12, and in joy you shall draw water from the wells of salvation. But in Hebrew, it was you shall draw water from the wells of Yeshua. And so it was most likely at that time as they were saying you will draw water from the wells of Yeshua, that Yeshua, Jesus, stood up and said, if you're thirsty, come to me and drink. And rivers of living water. Well, the mystery we have tonight, first of all, is linked to this because what happened when we talk about the gods and the spirits that came into our culture, it happened because our culture turned away from the waters of God, from the presence of Messiah. That's, that's how it began and that's the answer as well. And today it just happens to be the, the seventh and last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, the very day he stood up and said, come to me and drink. And I didn't plan that, but that's what it is. Now, I'm gonna start off as I did on this morning to set the stage, and then we're gonna take it into another realm. This morning, we opened up the mystery. It lies behind everything that is transforming our culture, America, that it goes back thousands of years ago, first to the Bible of all things, but also the tablets of ancient Babylon and Mesopotamia. Could the gods of ancient times that the Bible speaks about, that are myth and fiction, on one hand, could there be something real to them? And we saw that the Bible says there is. And it says that behind the gods was something called the Shadim, and the Shadim means the entities or the spirits. And then that was translated into Greek, it became the word daimonia, we get the word demon from it. And so Paul says when, they, when the Gentiles or the pagans at that time were worshiping the gods, they're actually worshiping, they're worshiping the daimonia or the spirits. Behind the gods are spirits. And also if you weren't here to set the stage, that means that the ancient pagan world was given to the spirits, given to the gods and the spirits. That means they were, there was a possession on the culture. And that's what it is. And then something happened, and what happened was God happened, Jesus happened, and all of a sudden the power of God went into the pagan world. The gospel went into the Roman Empire. And the power of the gospel went forth to that world. And it drove out the gods. That's why they're not here. That's why most of them are not here. That's why Zeus is not here. That's why people don't, most people don't worship those gods because they were gone from their temples. But it means also the spirits were cast out. Our entire civilization was 
cleansed, was exercised of these things. But then is the warning that Jesus gave, and that is that of the, the man who is, has a spirit, a spirit comes out of it, is, he's delivered, goes around looking for a place to rest, doesn't find any, says, I'm going to go back to the house or the man that I was cast out of. Goes back, finds it clean and empty, and so goes back and gets seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they repossess the man. And it says it will be worse than the beginning. And then he says in Matthew, so it shall be with this generation. And that is the largest application, is that it becomes a prophetic warning, and the warning or the prophecy is this, any culture, any civilization, any nation that, that has been cleansed of these things, been delivered by the power of God, if it ever turns away from God, like America, like the West, if it ever turns away, those spirits are coming back into it and they're coming back to possess it. And that is exactly what has happened to America. That's exactly what we've been watching for the last half century. And the last thing is that what we saw in, the, in this morning, we saw that there were three gods in particular called the Dark Trinity that I speak about in the book. The first, the possessor, the one who turns the nation, turned Israel away from God, turned America away from God. The second, the goddess called the Enchantress, the one who sexualizes the culture. And, and seduces a nation through sexuality with Israel and with America. And then the last one is the destroyer that causes parents to offer up their children to, to the gods, and that's exactly what happened beginning in the early 60s when we start opening the door and putting out God, they all come in. But now we move forward and the mystery is gonna get even deeper. It's gonna be explaining exactly what we're dealing with now because this didn't all happen in the beginning, but now it's happened. And it has to do, it begins with this goddess, the enchantress. Now before I say anything, I have to say this. The Bible says we war not against flesh and blood. We don't war against people. We're all in the same boat. Even people who are against the gospel, we're all in the same boat. And that is the gods or the spirits are against all of them, everyone. And our God is for everyone. And our God died for everyone. And so he loves everyone, and so we have to love everyone as well. But part of love is that we have to speak truth. If we don't speak truth, we are not giving love. And as I looked at the ancient Mesopotamian inscriptions about this goddess, I found something strange about her. First, the goddess was linked to a star or a planet, actually a planet, but they thought it, they just saw a light, it is now called Venus. That was her name in Rome. The goddess was Ashtoreth in the Bible, Ishtar in Babylon, Inanna in Sumer, Aphrodite in Greece. The planet named after her is the reason why Venus is called Venus. And it's, it would be pretty unbelievable to think that something in the sky could actually be explaining what's happening in our culture. But the Venus was called the morning star it was also called the evening star. It was almost, they almost saw it as two different things. And so this, this goddess was represented as the morning star and the evening star. She is the, the principality that, that blurs together opposites and, and, and merges them. So in one of the inscriptions it says, she says, I am a woman, I am a man. One of her hymns praises her, saying she is the one who has the power to turn a man into a woman, and a woman into a man. You want to understand what's happening in America now? It all goes back to this. This is her deeper work. She doesn't show it at the beginning. At the beginning, it was too radical. It's a sexual revolution. But as she takes possession of a culture, this deeper work is going to start manifesting in our culture, and it has. That's why we are seeing what we are seeing before our eyes, and this issue affects every church, every believer. It affects religious freedom, it, it will affect persecution. We're witnessing a spirit at work that blurs the line between male and female, man and woman, that bends the lines, that merges them, that confuses them, replaces one with the other. So a spirit of androgyny starts, is gonna enter the culture, and so it has, it's this spirit. And so I call her in the book at this point the transformer because that's what she does. She is a seductress. But now one of the ancient inscriptions says she grinds away the masculinity of men. 
So this spirit that has entered the culture seeks to emasculate men. It rages against them, as did the goddess. She challenged the authority of the, quote, patriarchy. So she destroyed her male lovers. So her spirit raged against men and male authority. Do you see that same spirit in America? It's that of, and so a spirit comes in, one could be seen in radical feminism, a rage. And, and to, to cut down, you know, many of us can remember, or some of us can remember, there was a show on television called Father Knows Best. Can you imagine a show with that title today? Now fathers are depicted as bumbling idiots or toxic. It's a strange thing we have. Because if a man is masculine, they'll say that's toxic. If a woman acts masculine, they'll say bravo. How strange is that? We have a spirit in our culture that rages against manhood. And her, it's her spirit seeks to take away men from their calling, away from fatherhood, away from marriage, away from being protectors and providers and seeks to emasculate or feminize them. So it directs the impulse of a man that God gave to provide and protect, redirects them into video games, into pornography. And so we watch as people are taken away from their purpose. At the same time, the goddess turns women into men, it says. So we have a spirit in our culture that seeks to defeminize women to masculinize them, do you sense that as well? To take women away from womanhood, away from marriage, away from motherhood. An ancient inscription says she gives weapons to women, she gives spindles to men. Women taking on the attributes of men. Now the goddess herself was female, but she had male attributes. And by doing so, she seeks to separate man and woman. Because if you can say that you can be the other, you don't need the other, you can keep them separate. And so we have a spirit that's been destroying marriage across this country. But her powers to transform go even deeper. The goddess had a mysterious priesthood. They were called the Asinu or the Gala or the Kalu in ancient Sumerian. They were men, these were her priests, men who filled her temples, who dressed in the clothing of women. It is written, she dresses men as women and women as men. They were priests under her possession. So if you see this return to our culture, men dressing as women, women as men, you know the gods are back. Do you see this in our culture? And so if it returns, and if you see it now being celebrated in our culture, what is that? Remember, Messiah said when the spirits return, they come back worse. In ancient times, she sought to possess her priesthood. But now she is seeking to possess an entire generation of children. She is seeking to confuse them. You see, the gods are after the children. Because if you can possess the children, you can possess the nation. And you can possess the future. You understand what's happening? What the gods do, what the spirits do, is they seek to destroy by taking people away from their purpose. Men from manhood, women from womanhood, marriage from marriage, children from childhood, and that's how she destroys. Messiah said the house would not remain empty. If you take, now, now, now go back to when America started turning away and started, took the first thing was take prayer out of school from the children. Now look at what has come into school. Look at what has come into kindergartens. What has come in, because Jesus said the house is not staying empty, something else is coming in. They are now at work, but it goes even further. The goddess seeks to turn men into women in the realm of sexuality. She turns a man into a woman. She turns a woman into a man. She changes desire. One of the things the goddess did among her priesthood, listen, is she actually had them surgically transitioned. This is thousands of years ago. This is not a new thing, an enlightened thing. This is paganism. I even found an inscription that describes the transition priesthood of the goddess dancing before her, holding scalpels as if celebrating their transition. And now adults are doing this to children. And so many pastors are afraid to say a word about it. And so many believers are afraid to say a word. And so many parents are scared to say something. But this is madness. And we have to call it what it is. This is abuse. 
And don't be scared. Don't be scared, you. If you don't stand, who will stand? What on earth would possess an adult to surgically transition a child and strewn their bodies for life? What would possess them? This spirit would possess them. There was one event that began this entire movement that has altered sexuality and gender in America and around the world. It happened in New York City at the end of the 1960s. It was an uprising of a same-sex bar called Stonewall. That came all the parades, came pride, all the altering. On the night the riots began, amazing, a convergence of signs linked to the goddess start appearing in New York City on the streets. We don't have time to go into it. I put this in the book, but to give a taste of it. The goddess was always linked to the gates. That was her sign, the gatepost. So it happens at, in New York City, which is the gateway of America. When she went to war, the sign that would appear was in the ancient mythology was a lion's head. So on that night, I won't go into it, but a lion's head appears. The goddess, actually, it says that she, she dwelt in taverns and alehouses. She's the patron of bars. So this whole movement began in a bar. It says when she went to war, it was called the Dance of Ishtar, that she would dance and there'd be destruction. In the middle of the riot, a whole line of people start dancing that night and they start singing a song, the words of which go back to the tablets of the goddess. The goddess was known as Storm. They called her, you are the loud thundering storm. Well, there was a woman that night who triggered the whole movement. And she actually resembled the, what the goddess, she actually had the form, and, she, and her name was Storme, Storm. Even, the, even that night, even, even, you know, that night they sought to break into the bar, which was called Stonewall, that was the beginning of the whole movement. Stonewall, in the ancient inscriptions it says that she is, you are the one who breaks the stone wall. Even the timing of the uprising, the movement began, under the full moon of the goddess, linked to the days of the goddess, according to the calendar of the goddess. But the work of this principality is taking over the entire culture. Let me show you just some of the mysteries behind it. The ancient inscription reveals that the goddess was the one who oversaw and initiated parades. Parades. What's the sign of the goddess? Parades every year. In the summer, she would make people parade. The inscriptions describe it that the spear of the goddess would cause men to parade in the streets of the city as women and women to parade as men. Does that sound familiar? Her parades would be filled with colors and they would be known for sexual licentiousness and the confusing of gender. Does that sound familiar? Well, they're back. This is not new. This is ancient linked to the gods. If you see this happening in your world, you know that a civilization has turned away from God. And it was through those parades that she would actually draw an entire culture into her worship. It is now happening. You see, it was only the gospel that was keeping all this away. And if we had known the mystery in the early 1960s, we could see then this is where it was gonna go. You see, it's a dangerous thing, whether it's Rus Russia, putting off the gospel, becoming the Soviet Union, whether it's Germany, putting off the gospel, becoming Nazi Germany. It is a dangerous thing for any, any civilization to put away the gospel because it's the only thing that's protecting it. In the ancient world and calendar, the goddess claimed an entire month as her own in which her spirit would especially possess the culture, a month of rituals, processions, Sexual licentiousness, what month was it? I looked at the ancient writings of the first believers. I looked at the writings of Saint Jerome because he identified it. And you know what he called? He said, this is, this is the month where all these festivals take place. He called it in Latin the month of Junium or the month of June. June. Now it was actually Constantine that stopped this. It was actually the prevailing of the gospel that stopped this from happening. Do you ever think it's strange that every year all around the world that nations that give one day to celebrate their birth give 30 days to celebrate a form of sexuality? Is that strange? That is not natural, that is supernatural. June, you know the, the goddess was called the goddess of pride, so we have an entire month called Pride Month. The parable says the spirit will return to the house it once dwelt in. 
The goddess had once inhabited June, so, so now she comes back and she has taken possession of June. The goddess was also linked to a sign. What was the sign? It was the sign of the rainbow. It is written she had rainbow eyes. One of the ancient inscriptions reads, puts two words together in, in the ancient dialect, Manzat Ishtar, which translated means rainbow Ishtar. Why is this sign taking over the culture? Why, because it, why is it connected to altered sexuality? Because it was connected to this goddess who's the goddess of altered sexuality. That's why the sign of the rainbow is now flying all across the world on American embassies. That is why the sign of the rainbow is on cereal, children's cereal boxes in your supermarket. That's why it's on children's cartoons. That's why every, almost every major corporation puts it up. It's not natural, it's supernatural. In the book, um, we won't go into it, but I show that every color of the rainbow is linked to the goddess, every color of this flag. Now, of course, the rainbow belongs to God, not to man and not to anything else, not to any movement. The rainbow actually belongs to God. But you see, in the myth of the goddess, she actually is the goddess who steals things from other gods and claims it as her own. So this, to take the sign of God and to put it in the face of God, this is a defiance to God. It's putting it in his face. And the sign that was about God, a God sparing a nation or sparing a people from judgment, it was his mercy to put this in his face. That's a dangerous thing. And there's a dark ancient secret to the rainbow and the goddess. I speak of in the book what it, what it really means. And if people knew it, they'd have second thoughts of ever holding it up. Could the mystery even lie behind the Supreme Court, between the rulings of the Supreme Court? The time that the goddess especially claimed, we said, was early summer, June. Specifically the last days of June around the time of the summer solstice. That was always a pagan time. There were three Supreme Court rulings that altered sexuality and marriage in America. The first happened in 2003, normalized altered sexuality. The second happened in 2013, the striking down of the Defense of Marriage Act. The third, we all remember, was the striking down of marriage as we know it. The altering of sexuality in 2003 happened in the month of June, last days of June, wake of the summer solstice, the days of the goddess on June 26. The second, the striking down of the defense of marriage happened in the month of June, last days of June, wake of the summer solstice, days of the goddess, same day, June 26. The third in 2015, the striking down of marriage as we know it came in June, last days of June, came the wake of the summer solstice, days of the goddess on the same exact day. June 26, all of them happened on the same day. That day is linked to the mystery of the goddess. They had no idea. The Supreme Court had no idea. It's not about people. It's, it's the manifesting of this. And on one of those days, remember when marriage was basically changed. Remember that day? And that night, the White House was lit up in the colors of the rainbow. Remember that? That was a sign from the principality saying, now I possess the White House. Now I can possess America. That night, here's a mystery. On the ancient calendar, it was the 10th of Tammuz, the 10th day of the ancient month of Tammuz. That's in the Bible. That's, that, that date is also that, the calendar of Babylon. That day that legalized a man marrying a man, a woman marrying a woman, I found on the ancient Babylonian calendar that that day, the 10th of Tammuz, was the day ordained for the casting of a spell to cause a man to love a man. Remember, the goddess was the one who transitions one thing into its opposite. So the big picture is she's transitioning America. She's transitioning a Christian America or Judeo-Christian nation into a pagan America. What is the agenda of the gods? What is their end game? They've come back with a vengeance. You see, they were cast out of the ancient world by the word of God. They're trying, that's why they're trying now to cast the word of God out of our culture. They were encroached by the gospel, by believers, by the church, so they have their target set on believers, set on you, set on the gospel set on ending religious freedom. Their temples and their shrines were once closed down because of the gospel, so now they are seeking, if they can, to close down ministries and houses of God. 
They were once cast out by the name of Yeshua, Jesus, so they are now seeking to cast his name out of America. And they were once driven to the margins and the shadows of the world. They are now seeking to drive you to the margins of the culture, to marginalize you. You see, it was the children of the Roman Empire actually that did away with the gods because the, the adults were in paganism. So now they're seeking to take the children of America away from God, away from the ways of God to change them so that they will do away with God. That's the aim. When the gospel triumphed, it was through the sign of the cross. It's a famous moment where the Emperor Constantine is in a battle and he sees in the sky a vision. He sees a cross and it said, he hears the word, in this sign conquer, the cross. Well today, there's not an accident that crosses are being removed. And another sign is replacing him, the sign of the rainbow, where now it's in this sign conquer. When the gods first come in, they don't come in saying, hey, we're gods and we want to destroy you. We're, we're dark spirits and we want to destroy you. They don't do that. They come in the name of freedom, tolerance, open up. You don't need this. They, you don't need to stay with this thing. Open up. We're going to give you liberation. You know, they come in the name of tolerance and openness. Everybody, remember, in the 60s, it was everybody do your own thing. It was every, anything goes, anything goes, be open. But you notice that it's changed now. That's not the spirit now. You see, that was just to get in the door. Once they get in the door, once they get established, it all changes. They move from toleration to no dissent. No dissent. To seek to cancel every voice of opposition. From a culture of toleration to a culture of cancel. Cancel culture. Remember the days of Ahab and Jezebel? Very similar because they started introducing Baal all over. But you know what happened when, when they got in power? It wasn't just, hey, bring, you know, consider Baal. It was now every knee shall bow to Baal. They seek to, so the gods, once they have power, seek to force everyone to go along, to celebrate in their festivals, to bow down, and to end any opposition. And that is what is happening. You know, Baal... In, in his mythology, he says he sought to be Lord over all the gods. His name means Lord. Ishtar said, whoever doesn't show homage, I will tear apart. And the third of the dark trinity, the destroyer, Moloch, his name means king. They all seek dominion. It's never that you can have a little coexistence because once it gets in, it seeks everything. It comes in, hey, just a little bit, but after that, it's at no descent anymore. The age began, this age began with a war. A war of the gospel in the spirit, the gospel, believers, and the gods, and the darkness. Well, that war is back, because they're back. This is now round two. And so this goes right into end time prophecy. What does the Bible say about the end times? It'll be a time of deceiving spirits, where men become lovers of self, and immorality increases and people will be without natural affection, at war with God, and they will persecute the people of God. That is happening now, you can see it. The gods seek total domination, a totalitarianism. That is what we're witnessing now. We've never seen this in America before, where people are actually saying, well, we don't really need free speech as we once did. Now free speech can be canceled. It all leads to the Antichrist in the end. The only thing that was protecting us was the gospel. Take that away and all these come in. That is the mystery behind all these things that are happening. And I gave you, I'm giving you tonight a little taste of how much everything that we're watching is actually part of a mystery. And so this is, what do we do about it? What do you do? This is what I get into with the last part. Every single one of you and everybody watching, you are all dealing with it anyway. You're dealing with it in your, when you turn on the television, you're dealing with it in your family, you're dealing with it. But the first thing is, it has everything to do with you because we are, it hits home here. What do you do? First thing to know, listen, I'm telling, what I'm telling you is the Bible explains it all. And what that tells you is that God is in control, still on the throne and has no intention of getting off that throne. So don't be scared. 
Believers have been under this barrage as believers for years and so many churches are silencing themselves. They're afraid to say anything. They're afraid to stand. Listen, if you don't stand, it's gonna come to your door. If you don't stand in the public square, it's gonna come to your house. You understand? We are not, but here's the, here's the encouragement. We are not the first to deal with this. In fact, for most of human history, most of Bible history, the great people of God, they've been dealing with this. The exception has been a Christian civilization. Many of you, I've shared this sometimes, but many of you, I wanna remind you, you've been praying, I wish I could live in Bible times. Congratulations, you are in Bible times. These are biblical times. You got them. The people of God are called to stand strong against all darkness, all spirits, and all gods. Why else are we still here? God doesn't, you know, God could have taken us all up, it would have been all nice, but God has a job for us that we cannot do in heaven. Moses stood against the gods of Egypt. It says, it says God will execute judgment on the gods of Egypt, and he did. Elijah stood against Baal and the gods of Canaan. One man changed the course of a nation, lifted the curse of a nation, lit, opened up the heavens of a nation because he would not compromise and he would not bow down. Daniel stood against the gods of Babylon. Jeremiah stood against Moloch. The Maccabees in between the Testaments stood against Zeus and the gods of the Greeks. Paul and the first Christians stood against the gods of Rome. Now it's your turn. Now it's my turn. Now it's our turn. If you are born again, you have to stand as they stood. These are the times that produce greatness. You know, you wanna be great, it generally doesn't come out in easy times, it comes out when the faith is challenged. It's easy to be a Christian when everybody says they're a Christian. But it's a whole, it means so much more when you stand for God when it's not easy. That's when God says, yes, well done, well done. I'll be with you, I will strengthen you. If you are born again, you are a child of Israel. Doesn't matter what you came from, you are born again as a citizen and child of Israel. And from Abraham onward to Paul, the heritage you have is to stand against all the idols and sacred cows of whatever age you live in and say no. If you were living in the Soviet Union, you'd have to say no. I don't agree, there's only one God, not the state. If you stood in the days of Hitler, you'd have to say no, I stand with God, you are not God. And now you have the chance because it's happening here. Now let me tell you a secret. When I was working on the return of the gods, but I didn't tell anybody, one of my associate pastors who has never come to me with such a thing, and he has this gift, but he's very humble, would never come. He's woken up early in the morning, trembling. He has a vision and a word, and he says, this is for Jonathan. He had no idea I was working on the book and, or what it was about, had no idea. He saw me, the vision, he saw me bringing forth a word, and all, there were all these altars of the gods. And as the word went forth, the altars of the gods began to crack open break open, and spirits started departing out of them. Then he saw a revival. Now he saw that link to the word. Now, the most brazen altar of the gods we have now is that of Moloch is the altar of abortion. The day I finished the return of the gods was June 24th. On that day, the word was finished, the altar on which our children were sacrificed, Rover's Way began to crack open. That's something we should be rejoicing over. We know it's not done, we know, we know it's just the beginning, we know that, but it's something, it's major, that ma major. Now in the Bible, when God brought revival, the sign was not necessarily a tent service, they didn't have that back then, like this. You know what it was? It was that the altars of the gods would be broken. The altars of the gods would be broken was a sign of revival. As in the days of Josiah, the revival of the nation was linked to the breaking of the altars. And now for the first time in the history of America, the most brazen, colossal altar has been cracked open by the hand of God. That is an encouragement. That's a sign from God. With God, nothing shall be impossible. That he does hear your prayers. May not happen like that, but he does hear your prayers. 
and that he's calling us to take new courage and new strength that there still can be revival even in the midst. But it depends here on this scripture, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and, and, and pray and seek my face and turn from their sinful ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. We have to make the most of this moment, people. God is giving it to us. We must pray for revival as never before. But not only pray for revival, we must actually start living in revival. In repentance, in righteousness, in holiness, in godly power. For the revival will then start them. And whatever altar, I said this morning, if there's an altar in your life from, with one of these things, a sin, a habit, something to the gods, crack it open. Say, I'm not gonna use it anymore, I'm gonna break this thing so I can't even touch it anymore. If the dark is getting darker, it's time for the lights of God to shine brighter. In that, this can be the most exciting time. The darkness will only bring out the shining of the lights. These are the days that produce Pauls and produce Esthers and produce, produce the great people of God. This is round two. This is the book of Acts, the sequel. We are dealing with the same principalities that they dealt with in the book of Acts. And so, if all these things are going back to where they were, we have to go back to where we were. We have to go back to the book of Acts and just live it, live it. I don't care how young or old you are. You have to stand and fight as one who is in the book of Acts. Live like someone who's in the book of Acts. And if something's not consistent, saying I don't want that, I want only what's in the book of Acts in my life. Because you have something more powerful than all the spirits of the gods. You have the spirit of the living God, the true almighty God. Remember what day this is today? This is the seventh day of the feast. This is the crowning feast, the crowning day of the crowning feast where Messiah said, if anyone is thirsty, come to me and drink today and rivers of the spirit will flow from you. This is the day, and that's the sign. You know, if all this began because of the absence of God, the opening of that house, the opening in America, then the answer from the absence of God is the presence of God in your life, the presence of God. The presence of God in your life is more powerful than the absence of God in America. But you gotta go full blast, Lord, I want more. I need the presence, I need the presence. By the presence of God, you can put away that sin. By the presence of God, you can break that stronghold. You can break through that wall by the presence of God. You have something more powerful, that spirit, if you'll overcome, that will overcome every other spirit. Live by the spirit, walk by the spirit, repent by the spirit, rise by the spirit, stand by the spirit, fight by the spirit, overcome by the spirit, and you will. If these are the days of Baal and Ashtoreth and Moloch, then these must surely also be the days of Elijah. If the gods have returned, then it's time for the Elijahs of God to return. It's time for you to be the Elijah of God that he has called you to be and take your stand in boldness and courage and confidence and power. You got one shot. You know, you know what is the most exciting part of a movie? The last 15 minutes. God shows you for it. This can be the great, take your step. It is not the time to compromise or cower or waver or shrink back or give in to the dark. It is time to stand against the dark, stand against the gods in your age, in your nation, your own life. Stand, it's time to stand against the spirit that has sought to make you bow down and intimidate you for years. Against that sin that has sought to make you bow down to it. That gloom, that habit, that attitude, that fear. That shame, it's time to take a stand against it. It's time to say, no, no more. I will not bow down my knee to Baal. I will not bow down my knee to that sacred cow. I will not bow down to that artist. It's time to say to that sin, that dark thing that has harassed you, to say, I will never bow down my knee to you again. I will not bow down to your bondage. I will not bow down to your fear. I will not bow down to your temptation. I will not bow down to your darkness, for you have no authority anymore. For in the name of Messiah, in the name of my God, get out of my land, get out of my nation, get out of my house, get out of my life, get your hell out of my life. I will only bow down my knee to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, 
to the one true living God who alone sits on the throne, whose name is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus above all names, the King above all kings, the Lord above all lords, and the power above all powers, and the God above all gods. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you right now. Everybody stand. Praise you. We praise you right now. Father, we ask, Lord, we come to you right now and we, we come to you and say, Lord, we need the Spirit. We need your outpouring. And here it is, the day, the day that you spoke of the outpouring, Lord. We need it, every one of us. Old or young, we need it. Whether ministers or laymen, it doesn't matter. We need it. Lord, we all need it. First of all, Lord, we come before you because revival begins with repentance. And so first, Lord, we say if there's anything in our life that shouldn't be there, Lord, any stronghold, any altar, we say, Lord, we say no more. We say, Lord, by your power, take it out and we renounce it. We put it away, Lord. We want, we, by you will crack it open. We will close the door and throw away the key. We'll make it impossible. Lord, we commit to it right now. Whatever that is, Lord, we want the strongholds of the gods out of our life. Whatever it is, Father, we want the altars out of our life. We say no more. You showed your mighty hand, Father. You showed your mighty hand by cracking open that gigantic altar, that horrible, dark altar. That means you have the power to break any altar. And so, Father, we say, Lord, be gone. Lord, we, by the authority of Messiah, in the name above every name, Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, we say to that thing, get out. Get out by the name of Jesus. We cast you out of our lives. We cast you out. Be gone, Lord, and we repent, Father. We turn, whatever it is, big or small, we turn from it. If it is not, not worthy of one who is of the book of Acts, we don't want it. Lord, we commit right now, we rule in the Spirit, and we say yes to your, whatever you called us to be, each of us, you have a calling. And Lord, we say yes to that calling. We will not wait and keep saying, tomorrow I'll get it together. Tomorrow I'll, I'll do what I need to do. I'll do it today. Before I go to bed, I'll take that first step. I'll take that first step. Lord, whatever it is, Father, to rise in prayer, rise in your word, rise in holiness, rise in joy, rise in praise, rise in the spirit, we will begin tonight. We'll take that one step tonight to seal it and one step tonight to get that, to say goodbye to that thing forever. Lord, we praise you tonight. Lord, we ask for revival. Lord, without revival, America has no hope. And Lord, you've given us the answer. You've given us the power. You've given so many of, of your people are afraid, but we are not gonna be afraid. We're gonna stand like Elijah stood on Mount Carmel. We're gonna stand, Lord, like Paul stood on Mars Hill. We're gonna stand strong. And Father, we pray, Father, let your spirit, your Ruach HaKodesh, come upon us, Lord. Come upon us, Lord, and have your way. Lord, we want your spirit, Lord. Here's the day you said it. It just happens to be today. And we say, Lord, come Holy Spirit. Come Ruach HaKodesh. Lord, come rivers of wa living water. We receive your spirit into our hearts, into our minds, Lord, into our thoughts. We receive your spirit onto our hands to do your will. We receive your spirit to anoint our feet, to walk in your way and turn to what is not, from what is not your way. Lord, Spirit of God, have your way. And Lord, we pray, Father, we, we are going to seek your spirit to walk in your spirit, Father, and move because in your spirit there is nothing we can't do. We can truly say, I can do all things through Messiah who strengthens me. And I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me. And greater is he in me than he and everything that's in the world. Lord, we ask for the power. Lord, we, Lord, this is a this is an anointed night. We are just sent. We've sensed that in the worship. We sense it now. Lord, your anointing be upon us, Father. Your anointing, Spirit of the Living God. I feel like. Spirit of God. 
Lord, your spirit, your Ruach HaKodesh be upon us. We receive, Lord, rivers from the throne, rivers from the throne of God, rivers from the throne of God to accomplish everything. Your presence, your presence drive everything out, wash and cleanse and fill and overflow, overflow our minds, overflow our hearts, overflow everything in our life to do and be all that you call us, you put us in our mother's womb to do and be for such a time as this. Lord, we praise you and we ask, Father, revival in our lives first, revival in our hearts, revival in our, or in our homes, Father, revival. Lord, in this place, revival, revival, Lord, spirit, spirit, and the power of saying yes to your will, repenting, uh, opens the door for revival. We say yes. And Lord, we pray your spirit be upon, Lord, be upon this nation. We pray, Father, that the power of the Almighty, Lord, as you broke that altar, Lord, would sweep across this land, Father. Have your way from one coast to the other, from the east coast to the west coast. Have your way on the heartland. Have your way on the capital, Lord. Have your way, Lord, in, in the houses of government, Father. Have your way, Lord. Have your way on the children and the young. Let there be a great and mighty revival in the midst of it. Raise up a Joshua generation. Have your way, Lord. We just praise you tonight. And stand in the awe of your presence like Moses standing before the burning bush, Lord. And Father, Lord, like a Isaiah beholding the Lord, I saw the Lord and the train of his glory filled the temple. The train of your glory filled this house. We receive you, Father. We praise you, Lord. Your power, Lord. We want to, Lord, just overwhelm us. We want to be whelmed. We praise you and praise you and receive. Lord, I ask your spirit be upon each one. And Father, your gift be upon each one. Your imparting be upon each one that you have called. And the power to fulfill the calling on each life be upon them now. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you tonight. Let your will be done. And we pray not only for revival in America, we pray for revival in the nations, Lord. We pray overflow. We pray for the end time harvest. Let the name of Yeshua, Jesus, Lord, be glorified throughout the earth, Lord. You promised in that day I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. In that day I shall pour out my flesh. Lord, let there be rivers of water, rivers of the spirit on this day of the rivers of the spirit, Father. Rising, rising. Lord, we praise you, each of us. We praise you like the prophets beholding your presence. We praise you and bless you tonight. Have your way on each one. We love and praise you. Have your will be done in our lives, Lord. We love you, O oh Lord. And we declare, as Moses did, Micha mocha be'elim Adonai, who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? You are the God of all gods. You are the living, true God, mighty, awesome in holiness, doing wonders. And we believe you for the wonders. And we bless you and praise you. Hallelujah. I don't know. I just like being in the Lord's presence right now. Your presence in the temple. Your presence on your people. Stay in the presence of God. And I'm going to sound the, the trumpet, the shofar of God for release and blessing, the blessings of jubilee and freedom and breakthrough and reconciliation and power, whatever you need in your life, in the will of God. I'm going to, if you guys can bring that up, just stay, everybody stay in the spirit. I, worshipers, I'm glad you're up here.
this isn't my shofar or my talit, but I asked, do you have a spare one? And you have a spare one. Not all churches can say that. And you know what's on here? <laughs> Talk about the Lord. But you shall receive power that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. <laughs> Fire. guys on the sound if you can give massive as much reverb as you can on this and all right I'm gonna look and you guys when you hear the sound of the shofar give a shout shout of Jericho whatever needs to break forth we're gonna pray for that first whatever needs to be broken and freed and whatever needs needed in your life pray for that now and then when you hear it agree with the power of God to do it Father, we praise you and we bless you. And Lord, and, and by the way, when you do it, just keep shouting. Father, we just ask your power right now. We declare that you are powerful. Father, you are awesome and powerful, Father. And we pray, Father, for whatever needs to be released. It's okay. It's okay. Whatever needs to be released in our life. Whatever breakthrough is needed now, Lord, we pray for it. Whatever re restoration, the, the powers of jubilee, the powers of freedom from any bondage, we pray for him. The power of change, the power of transformation, the power of victory, the power of, of your triumph in every situation, we pray for it right now. And we declare in the name of Messiah, the name of Yeshua, the name above every name that is named in heaven and on earth, Lord, we pray by that power, be released, your power be b released. Lord, your power be set forth, your power, Father, for restoration, for breakthrough, for, for freedom, for all that you have ordained for each life right now. Pray for him, and when you hear the sound, Be released, Lord, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Put this one up. I want that sound to be louder. Let's do that. Let's, let's do that one more time, but you be louder too. Ready? name of Yeshua, the power of God. power of God. Now, stay in the presence of the Lord and I'm going to give you the blessing, the blessing that is given by God himself. This is his own blessing that he gave. And when he said, you give this, he said, you'll put my name upon my people. So it's a blessing that he himself ordained. It's a cool, amazing thing. His own prayer. He said, he's giving it to the sons of Aaron to do with the priest. That's the line I come from. And we're all priests, but there's a special thing for, it's a special joy for me to be able to do this. So it says, you will give that to Israel. You are God's Israel in the spirit. So lift up your hands and whatever blessing is needed right now, receive this not from man, but from God. And you guys on the sound, if you give me mega on, the, on whatever you can do with reverb, just to help my voice. Okay, and here's the blessing. 
from the Lord. You can give me something on that keyboard. Yeah. in the center of his will. The Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob cause his face to shine upon you, his servant, upon your home, upon your life, upon your walk, and pour out the rivers of his grace upon you. The Lord God of heaven and earth, the eternal great I am, the Lord, the awesome, ineffable God of all ages, Lift up the glory of his countenance upon you, his beloved, and the Lord give to you shalom, life, fullness, peace, all the blessings of his love. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, the name above every name that is named, the name of Yeshua, the light, or HaOlam, the light of the world, Uchvod Yisrael, the glory of Israel, Ba'ari Yahuda and the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen and amen. God bless you all. I'll see you. I'll see you outside. God bless you all. Love you.